Hello again, Strokecroft. Today I'm bringing you another video, build video for Warhammer Chaos Bane. And this is the Crit Monster 4.0. Um, the build that I've enjoyed uh, playing uh, for uh, quite some time, um, and many of you, I hope, as well. It's been a build that, as you can see, I've already uh, reached the point where I'm making the fourth version of this build, and. In terms of changes, one of the major changes you would notice compared to the video, not the text version uh, of Crit Monster 3.0 would be one of the axes. We are still using a grudge holder, but for the second axe, in the previous video, I was still using uh, the, the, um, the Ultimate Carnage. But now, Victor's Tribute is the one I recommend. 3.0 already says Victor's Tribute as a recommended axe in the, um, in the setup in the website, but... Uh, the video was kind of outdated, so I thought uh, it would be nice to make this clear even in the beginning. Um, because the Victor's Tribute gives you 30% uh, damage uh, after you kill an enemy, after you kill an elite enemy, up to 10 stacks, which is 300%. And this is much better compared to the nerfed Ultimate Carnage. Ultimate Carnage was a great axe, but with the nerfs they added to it, it kind of seems very unattractive, unappealing to use for builds. Overall, as you can see, uh, this works with any set. And I've been able to play Chaos 10 solo, but I don't think it's worth doing Chaos 10 solo. It's a little bit slower. I mean, you can maybe do Chaos 8, Chaos 9 speedruns without needing to be that good at dodging, but if you feel like doing Chaos 10, the build can do it. When you have good gear, it can solo it. Um, see, those are some Chaos 10 bosses, and it can be played with any set. You can do um, Undefeated Challenge, you, you could do uh, Grimnir, you could do Last Song, uh, you could do the Everpix Karazakarak set. Either set would be fine. So, enjoy the build as much as I do, hopefully. Um, if you have any suggestions for other things that maybe I might have missed, uh, do let me know. I'm going to start with the god skills, then I'm going to move on to the skills and then um, talk about gear and stuff like that. Uh, but as I said, it doesn't matter which set you use, it's the most flexible, most versatile uh, build uh, for this class I've uh, made so far. With the god skills, keep in mind, um, I would suggest uh, using the god skills the way you see them without any changes, but um, I would not do this build unless I own the God Skills 3. This build requires the God Skill and the second God Skill 3, which comes as a standalone DLC or as a part of the, of the Magnus Edition or the Slayer Edition uh, bonuses. Um, so, starting off from the basic God Skill 3, we are taking Ancestor's Gift. Um, the basic one on the way taking unstoppable which we don't use unstoppable superior ancestor gift superior which some in some cases you might want to implement in others don't and then you're going all the way here for this counter attack damage so this thing this is what we are getting from this side this is giving us 148 percent counter attack damage then it's giving us HP, it's giving us health drain, it's giving us a little bit of damage, it's giving us 9% cooldown reduction, which is which is nice. It's giving us 30% armor increase, champion uh, damage reduction, bonus damage to champions comes from the other side of tree. And now this side of the tree. On this side of the tree we are getting 125% crit damage, 12% damage, 10% energy, 20 cost reduction. 16 bonus damage to champions. On this side of things, you want to go to Fighter Spirit, Fighting Spirit Mastered and stop there. Fighting Spirit Mastered is important. Um, let me switch to a set where you can see why. Um, see, this is the crit damage it gives. Let me let me remove my rage. I want to show you the the clean the clean bonus of that one without uh, max rage or five rage. See, uh, now now we're going to the clean bonus. So this gives us 1004 crit damage when I have when I have 40,000 counter attack damage. So for for each for each 1000 counter attack damage you get uh, for each 4 counter attack damage uh, for each 40 counter attack damage you you get one crit damage. So 400 gives you 10. 4000 um, gives you a hundred. Forty thousand gives you uh, one thousand. That's kind of how it is. 
So it's amazing because uh, with just three pieces of equipment blessed for counter-attack damage, I can get um, I can get over a thousand crit damage, and that's without activating crit or any other things. You can get more counter-attack damage from from cer certain places, but uh, but that's on this side of things. So this is this 50% counter-attack damage, um, then this 14%. Then this 14% and this 14%, this 14%, 14% here, 14% here, 14% here, and um, that's for the counter attack stuff. Now there's another version where you're not gonna be using as much counter attack. You see, uh, by removing this, you're removing 64% counter attack. But what you can get is you get another 20, then 27. Uh, then 34, 34% uh, extra health drain and 6% extra cooldown. So if you need cooldown and, and you're willing to sacrifice some damage and you want extra health drain, that's a good setup to do. That's the alternative. So you're removing those six points and you're putting three points here, three points here. Um, and that's that's the only um, change I would suggest to, um, to try for people. I wouldn't suggest trying other changes. But the ideal setup is that one. And I hope this is clear. Next, let's move on to skills. It's going to be a longer skill segment because I'm going to be talking about all sorts of uh, sets and how to do those um, builds for those sets. Here we are at the skills segment now. And I'm going to show you quickly how to do the skills for every set. This is for the undefeated set. And this is the damage version. If you want uh, a more defensive version, you can sacrifice this one and add padded armor. Another thing you can sacrifice is Hero of the Desert and add padded armor. If you don't have the uh, Act 5 DLC, the Tomb Kings DLC, then you can replace Hero of the Desert with padded armor. Padded ar armor is from Act 6, which is a free DLC that everyone has, uh, and that's how you do it. So you have Axe Throw uh, or any other. Um, zero point um, energy basic skill energy generator uh, I prefer axe throw because it's ranged um, and I can do it from afar if I want to and I just like it um, then strike of the anvil mastered or heroic or heroic if you're using the ever peak set then um, ancestors gift um, the basic uh, one is good enough uh, then Bird of the Mountain Superior, but there are some exceptions. Uh, for example, on this setup with the last song, you're going to be using Bird of the Mountain uh, Basic because um, we just don't have enough skill points because we don't use a heroic skill on that set because the heroic skill of that set just doesn't work well. Um, this one, let me show you. This one, it just doesn't work well. This 100% damage is uh, extra bleeding damage. We are not focusing on bleeding here. So back to the undefeated, so Avenging Charge superior, but in some cases you might want to use the Avenging Charge basic, such as the, um, such as the Grimnir set and, um, and, um, and the setup for the Wast Song set. But on Everpix and on Undefeated I'm using superior Avenging Charge, then Wast Bastion Heroic or Mastered. You're gonna see uh, here we're using Wast Bastion Heroic. Um, and um, Strike of the Anvil Mastered here, it's vice versa. In fact, you're using Was Bastion Superior because I like Was Bastion Superior more. I like Was Bastion Superior more, that's why I've put um, extra um, uh, extra four points into Axe Superior. Um, and why Superior and not Mastered? Well, just look at the descriptions. Superior heals based on Rage. Uh, so, it uh, grants a health bonus to, uh, to all players, heals based on rage levels and generates energy and rage. This one, heals based on the number of bleeding enemies. See uh, what I mean? You would, you would need to have nearby bleeding enemies and the more the better. But if you don't have many bleeding enemies, then it's not going to be a good heal. Um, and I'd rather use superior that's kind of how it is. Here I'm using Superior on the last song, on the Grimnir I'm also using Superior. So keep that in mind. Then uh, on the passive side of things, 
For every set I'm using Fighting Spirit Mastered, which gives us crit damage based on our counter attack damage and we get extra counter attack damage from various sources, various places. Um, so when we get Rage, that gives us counter attack damage. Um, increase, which kind of, um, I can try and show you now, with 5 stacks of Rage. Uh, this went uh, up like a hundred and something and a rage goes up to 20 stacks um, Now the death ball death ball stunt enemies uh, take more damage stunning an enemy also inflicts bleeding. This is crucial. We are stunning enemies with um, With altering of resonance when we use a cooldown skill and the cooldown skill would be last bastion or strike of the anvil Ancestors gift and Bud Mountain do not count as skills with cooldown because they are god skills and god skills even though they have cooldown they, they are not considered skills. Uh, so skill with cooldown refers to non-god skill uh, skills with cooldown. And why do we need to stun him? Um, stun inflicts bleeding on nearby enemies. So we stun them with this or this and then that triggers this. Damage increased based on the number of nearby bleeding enemies. Uh, up to 10 stacks of 3. So you do uh, you do 30% more damage to bleeding enemies and then if you have up to 10 bleeding enemies nearby you get 10 times 3 extra damage um, to you. Um, so dual chain reaction, another thing I never remove regardless of what setup I take, I never remove that. Dual chain reaction. Uh, is basically using a skill with cooldown increases crit hit damage for a few seconds. This got kind of changed with the um, with the Witch Hunter update. Um, it used to be it used to be four stacks for duration of four seconds, and you could get 400 crit damage uh, four seconds per stack. Now it's three stacks up to 300 damage um, only, but it lasts for six seconds, so it's much easier to keep it uh, up um, and not lose that uh, in momentum. Now, Hero of the Desert, as I mentioned, it's passive that's from Act 5, and this gives you damage, damage reduction, HP, counterattack damage, crit damage, energy, and movement speed. A little bit of everything. What we take it for is the damage, the damage reduction, the counterattack damage. Uh, <laughs> and the crit damage and HP are also amazing. I don't care much about the movement speed or the energy, but they also help a lot. Eternal Grudge Superior, as I mentioned, um, the rage lasts longer and it's more effective. Um, and see, this is what might change in, in the different builds. I always take the Hero of the Desert, but if you don't have it, you might want to take Padded Armor or something else there. And you can see here I have Internal Grudge, here I have Eternal Grudge, here I don't. Here I have Master Blacksmiths, because I don't have enough skill points to take it. Another option um, would be on the Grimnir set, instead of Master Blacksmiths, to take uh, potion of Wrath, uh, using Potion Grants counter attack damage bonus for a few seconds, this is a great alternative um, there. Uh, so Eternal Grid Superior, um, I would take it on any build except on Grimnir because there is no, no room. Uh, if you want to take Eternal Grid Superior, uh, it's going to give you, on the Grimnir, it's going to give you, uh, as you see, it gives up to 20% damage. 1% damage per stack of rage, rage goes up to 20 stacks, so that's up to 20% damage. And do you want to sacrifice 10% damage, damage reduction, HP, counter attack damage, etc. just to get extra 10% damage on top of it. So you're losing the damage reduction, the HP, the counter attack damage, the crit damage, the maximum energy and movement speed, just so you can get 10% extra damage. I don't think it's worth it, but you might want to do it. Alternatively, another thing, if you don't have Hero of the Desert, instead of... Uh, Eternal Grudge, you might want to put Potion of Wrath um, and that's for any setup. For any of those setups, you might want to put Potion of Wrath instead of Hero of the Desert, which frees up 4 points, and because this costs 7, this costs 3, 4 points which you could spend on Axe Throw upgraded, uh, which would not be a bad thing to do in my opinion. I would stay away from Ancestor's Gift Superior, but if you want, you can do it as well. For example, um, on this setup, um, if I were to do this, uh, uh, my bad, if I were to do this, I now have 7 points. And that means I could probably upgrade something. I could probably, um, 
upgrade something with those seven points. Um, it's not eight points, but it's still um, good points. Uh, and uh, let's say on this setup where I have Axtro Superior, let's say I put Axtro Basic and then I replace this. I already have five points at this point and then I put um, this here. I'm at nine points. That means I can upgrade uh, Ancestor's Gift. Ancestor's Gift upgraded. It's not a bad option. See, this one, um, it was for four seconds, just like that one. But if your HP is low when activated, damage and uh, the effect duration are increased. So if you're under 20% HP when you activate Ancestor's Gift, you get 30% extra damage. So that's not bad. Uh, obviously, it's risky to try and get it, but you see the cooldown is the same, so why not Why not do that? Um, you're losing stuff. Uh, alternatively, as I said, um, that's only if you don't have Hero of the Desert. Another thing, if you have Hero of the Desert, you could do it that way without Eternal Grudge. And keeping Hero of the Desert, keeping Potion of Wrath, getting this one and just this one gets demoted. Actually, you don't even need to demote this. You can still retain that one. For the legendary ranks, uh, this is how the priority goes. Reinforcement priority 1. You wanna max this one in power and then maybe get uh, like 30% chance or 35 or 40% chance. And then eventually you would wanna get endurance. And endurance is more useful than crushing because endurance applies above on you. Uh, where you take less damage, whereas with crushing you apply debuff on the enemies and you have to hit an enemy and apply it to that enemy. So if an enemy that hasn't been debuffed hits you, uh, you're not gonna benefit from that damage reduction. Whereas with this one, when you have the debuff, um, when you have the buff on you already, even a new enemy that just appeared, if it hits you, you would still take less damage from them. So priority number one, priority number two is endurance or punishment. If you don't need damage reduction, get punishment for damage. Then after that, um, priority number three is crushing. Normally you would probably go reinforcement, endurance, punishment, crushing, and then rage, ignoring healing. Healing is okay, but it's not a priority for me. I can still heal with avenging charge superior, but I wouldn't count on it. And eventually uh, you would probably want, um, let's say, if you have 800 points, you can get this, 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 and this maxed out fully. 100% power, 100% chance. Or you can be a little bit more clever about it and you can see with 770 points, I have 30% chance on those. Four, I've got uh, 100 power, so I've got uh, maximum effectiveness and then uh, I've put 25% uh, chance here and I started investing into power here. Uh, ideally, if you have 1200, you can max out everything. If you have 1000, you can max out this, this, this and this, and even this. Although this one has no limit, and I'm gonna quickly demonstrate by removing the power here, so you can see how Legendary Rage goes um, beyond 100 power. You can see, <laughs> pretty solid, eh? Uh, that's how this one goes. Obviously, um, it's a bug most likely, it's not intended, but uh, you can put a lot of points into rage. If, you, if you're doing lower level difficulty, you don't need endurance and crushing, you can just <laughs> put a ton of points into this one and just uh, speed run the hell out of uh, stuff with the Grimnir set and, uh, and rage. Um, and it's gonna be pretty fun. I th think that pretty much sums up um, those points. I hope it's helpful to you out there. Now, let's talk about what gear I would recommend for this build. Um, in any case, regardless of what set you use, you would want to access that RS Foes, a grudge holder and a, a Victor's Tribute. You would want Old Ring of Resonance, ideally a Fiery Ring of Tori, or something else more about things in a moment, uh, or a Mountain Pendant. Ideally, Fiery Ring of Tori and a Mountain Pendant would be the best combo, as much a cooldown reduction as possible, and the more cooldown reduction, the more we spam Strike of the Anvil. Now, regarding sets, any set works. You can do it with Avenger, uh, the last song set. You could do it with uh, Champion of Karaza Karak, known as Everpeak. You could do it with Grimnir, known of, uh, well, Grimnir. <laughs> and you can do it with the challenge, uh, the undefeated set. Um, 
as uh, you probably saw in the skill segment, um, there's uh, there's ways to do the skill points for each set that are slightly different yet very similar. Uh, so let's talk about uh, rows and affixes. On the helmet you want cooldown reduction, priority number one. Priority number two, HP, and then next there are things like armor and uh, actually counter attack damage is uh, the next priority. So you would want cooldown reduction and then priority number two would be HP and counter attack damage on the helmet. The rest is just fewers and armor, you always get armor. So uh, for the here for the chest and for the leg armor, priority number one is counter attack damage and HP. The rest uh, is okay. The rest is fewers. Um, so you want as high HP and as high counter attack damage as possible there. On the boots, the same thing. As high counter attack damage as high HP and some speed bonus wouldn't hurt. It's the only place where you can get speed. So that's not a bad place to get it. Then um, on the armor um, hands, on the hand armor, on the on the bracers, uh, gauntlets, you want priority number one to be damage. Flat damage, not damage over time. Uh, regular flat damage. Priority number two would be counter attack damage and HP. And priority number three would be crit damage and uh, life drain. Uh, after that, the rest is fewers. Um, now moving on to stats for the weapons. You want on both axes cooldown reduction, crit chance, damage, HP. Priority number one, in my opinion, are damage, cooldown reduction and crit chance. You want those three things. Even if you don't have HP, um, that's okay. But um, counter attack damage and HP are your priority number two stats. Maybe HP would be priority number three, counter attack damage priority number two. So let's say uh, you have cooldown reduction, crit chance and damage and then you go uh, counter attack damage and then you go HP and then you go life drain. So if you want six stats, that's gonna be it. Cooldown, crit chance, damage, counter attack damage, HP, health drain. Those are the six perfect row stats you can get on an axe. Uh, and this one is very old, that's why it only gives 995 counter-attack damage, but it can go up to 2000 now, um, double what it used to, something like this one. See on this one, uh, obviously you can see it doesn't have HP and gives cost reduction, it doesn't have um, health drain, it gives crit damage. Crit damage is not so bad, um, you could probably sacrifice health drain for crit damage, it's not gonna be terrible, it's actually gonna give you more damage, less survivability. If you think you don't need health drain, sure, go for, for crit damage um, as well. Now, moving on to accessories. Um, there's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, accessories can get exactly the same stats with one exception. Uh, amulets can get armor and uh, rings cannot. On the amulet and rings, you want priority number one, crit chance, cooldown reduction. Priority number two would be things like um, counter attack damage, HP and health drain. So basically the same stats you want on an axe, uh, except um, Except um, you 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 might want to focus on the cooldown reduction and crit chance as your priorities here. Yeah, damage is good. If you get fat damage, amazing. Um, health drain is amazing. HP is amazing. Cooldown um, and crit chance are your priorities here. The rest is uh, obviously if you if you get some HP, it's good. If you get health drain, if you get damage. See, this one is almost perfectly rolled. On this one, I would change the cost reduction for um, for HP or for counter attack damage. I would personally prefer HP, um, just because I, I like uh, having a little bit more of it. But some people might want to just uh, keep that firing of Torius cooldown, crit chance, damage, health drain, and um, adding counter attack damage into the mix. Um, it took me a while, it took me over a year to get uh, a, a row as good as this one. It may not be perfect, but it's uh, it's 4 out of 5. 4 out of 5, it's as good as it, it's as good as it gets. Then Old Ring of Resonance, you get Old Ring of Resonance by doing invasions. So basically, um, there's something you need to keep in mind when farming Old Ring of Resonance. It's over here, meaning... Um, W the way I would do it is I would probably do 1, 2, 3, etc. Take this corruption resistance, 
then start taking this corruption resistance, then I'll take this corruption resistance, this corruption resistance. Then uh, if I'm a new player, I would move on to doing this no those nodes, taking dualist chain reaction. Then you would move down here. Uh, maybe get some of those, maybe get some of those. If, if you're having trouble, then return do those nodes to get those uh, extra debuffs for the enemies. But what you need to do is you need to keep pushing until you finish this node. And you need to do this on rank 10. So new players uh, would start from rank 1 and 10 unlocked. So all the way between 1 and 10 you would have everything unlocked. My advice is start from rank 10. Push all the way to here and then don't click on the ring. From rank 10 you switch to rank 1. Every single note you've completed on rank 10 would be completed on ranks 1 through 9. Then what you do is on rank 1 you click on this, you collect a ring. Make sure you have room for enough rings. You're gonna be collecting 10. Uh, then you switch to rank 2, collect the ring on rank 2. Switch to rank 3, collect the ring 2 on rank 3. And so on, going one up the ranks. And eventually you reach rank 10 and you collect the ring on rank 10. This is how you collect 10 rings um, at once. Uh, and this is how you could do it. Now, there's something like an exploit and cheat. I haven't done it, but some people uh, might want to experiment with it since, um, well, it, the game is single player uh, in a way. You can play co-op, but the, the saves are for single player. So what you can do is you can copy paste your uh, hero saves before collecting. Then collect the 10 rings. If you don't like the rows, uh, overwrite your old saves. Uh, and to do it again um, and keep repeating until you get good rolls. I've not done it because I just don't feel like it's um, it's gonna be fun for me if I do it that way. I'd much rather have the developers uh, implement a system for rerolling the affixes for, and for sacrificing salvaging green items to get some resource that we use for rerolling, the Abu 3 style. Uh, that would be the better option to do it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the items. Um, now let's talk blessings quickly. Um, basically, let me just select one item. Let's just select this item. This is the blessing for damage. Gre um, red, green, red, red, green, red. This gives you 4.4k damage, 4000 HP. If you want to uh, reduce a little bit the damage by 420, uh, coincidence, I think not. Uh, so you have 420 less damage, 2000 more HP. And if you want another 420 less damage and another um, 2000 more HP, you do it that way. And you want 7 of those. 7 pieces of equipment would be uh, with, uh, with this one. 7 pieces of equipment with that one. That's what you want. Then um, next is the counter attack blessings on 3 pieces of equipment and my suggestion is Pick three pieces of your armor. Don't pick rings, weapons, and amulets because you might want to switch over the rings, weapons, and amulets to to other heroes. So in my case here, I've picked the, the helmet, the, um, the chest armor, and the boots. Uh, and what you do for those three pieces is you do green, blue, green on one side and green, blue, green green on the other side. This gives you up to 2500 counter attack damage, up to 8000 HP and up to 620 armor. It doesn't um, it, it, it doesn't get better uh, when you do it that way. In that way you only get more armor, less HP. The counter attack damage is the same and you care about the HP and um, the counter attack damage. So the counter attack damage is fixed regardless how you do it, so do it that way. And that's pretty much sorting out the blessings. Uh, oh, and make sure when you're blessing to be using a god token. So the god tokens, those you get from bosses. Bosses at the end of a map, bosses from boss rushes, um, all types of bosses uh, that you kill. Um, so keep in mind, make sure you're using this because if you see, if you don't use this, you have uh, you have a very big uh, gap between the minimum and maximum. Uh, which is, as you can see, between 50% of what you can get and 100%. And if you do this, it becomes between 90% and 100% of the maximum. Um, so, narrows the gap down um, and that's the way to do it. 
Now next I'm gonna show you more gameplay footage of the building action and talk about rotations and stuff. Here we are at the gameplay segment where I'm going to show you more gameplay footage and talk about how to rotate the skills, how to play the build. It's not rocket science, it's uh, pretty simple. Um, but let's go through the important steps. First of all, I normally start with a uh, Wasp Bastion. This would give us energy and this would uh, also heal us. Uh, but we start with the energy because we started full HP. Next, uh, I would use Ancestor's Gift so that I don't consume energy when I start using Avenging Charge uh, to move around the map. And after that, uh, I would start uh, using Bud of the Mountain and start jumping around and reuse uh, when I need energy or healing was Bastion and reuse, um, reuse uh, things like Bud of the Mountain where I think I need them for that regeneration and that extra damage. But uh, the main whoop would be jumping, moving around, jumping, moving around, jumping, moving around um, and uh, obviously Ancestor's Gift doesn't just uh, make you not consume energy while it's there, but it also gives you invulnerability from all types of damage, uh, from anything, even bosses. So uh, it's just uh, such an amazing combo to have that. But if the mountain heals us, does damage and triggers cooldown reduction from things like Fire Ring of Tori um, and the mountain pendant, which is just, um, it's just great. And that's kind of uh, how the rotation is. Keep in mind you're gonna have to do a lot more dodging if you plan on playing Chaos 10 uh, and you're gonna have to be very good with timings on when you use Was Bastion to heal up and when you use Ancestor's Gift to be invulnerable. Um, but for Chaos 8 it's a little bit more chill, for Chaos 9 kind of a middle ground. So uh, I didn't include footage for Chaos 9, just Chaos 8 and Chaos 10 footage. I thought that would be enough um, to show you um, the, the more speedy version and the and the less PD but um, more um, rewarding in terms of XP version because Chaos 10 gives you only 600 extra wood quality and when you're uh, talking about numbers like 10.5, 11,000 wood quality obviously whether it's um, 600 more or less it doesn't matter much you can still get a ton of green on Chaos 8 even 5 and 6 can give you a ton of green if you're doing upgraded relic hunts if you're doing any other type of activity, obviously Chaos 10, um, that 600 wood quality would matter and would make a difference, but um, in general we farm in, um, in uh, upgraded uh, relicants and that's where the wood is. So I hope you liked that explanation. To get notified when I upload more content for this game or uh, other games like this one, which would be Wooters of all varieties, isometric, uh, third person ARPGs, uh, Wooter shooters and all sorts of uh, Wooters like that, you could subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out uh, on my content updates. And optionally you can even join as a member of the Struck Club on YouTube as a channel member to get access to exclusive perks such as uh, special emotes custom made by me, special badges custom made by me that represents how many months you have been a member for, uh, as well as uh, opt-in uh, of editing tutorials that I can give for Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, as well as uh, shout-outs and things like that. And I would like to use this uh, part of the video to thank all my um, YouTube members and uh, Twitch subscribers. Thank you for supporting the channel and keeping me going. Uh, thank you also for watching this video, everyone. Keep it cool, uh, Struck Club. Until next time and goodbye.